Hello everybody. Today on our Printer Basic Series we're going to cover flatbed scanners. The information we cover today will benefit you regardless of if your scanner is by itself, in a multifunction printer, in a cheap printer, in an expensive printer. So let's get started. This scanner it came off of a Brother multifunction printer. It is a flatbed scanner with an ADF. The ADF on most models are easy to spot because you'll have the large ADF assembly. But the scanner glass itself is kind of special on these particular models. On a regular scanner without an ADF, you'll just have this glass platen that you scan your pages, books, pictures, butt, face, whatever. On units with an ADF, you'll get this extra slot. And this slot is where paper slides through a feeder on the ADF, goes back out, and ends up on that tray at the top. This is the most important part because it is the part that gives the most trouble to users. The most common call you're going to see with this particular scanner assembly, other than not picking up paper, is going to be that they're getting an image defect, but only when they scan through the ADF. So, you're going to go to your customer, you're going to take a scan when you get to the printer, and you're going to end up with something like this. You're going to end up with these solid lines. The giveaway that they're from the scanner is that they go end to end and they're regardless of what you scan. So usually you'll load it into your, your paper into your ADF, it goes through the ADF, rolls it around, it passes it over this part of the printer, and then it puts it back on top. So what you do is, the easiest way to find the spot, you could just clean the whole glass, which is what you're going to end up doing no matter what. The easy way is to take the document, which went this way, flip it over. We're going to line up the corner, and now, if we look at the lines, they lead to the black dots that create these lines. At this point, now you know what's caused the issue. You can see it, and in a lot of cases, they're not this big. I've exaggerated them. They're usually pin dots. They're just little colors. You usually got to get kind of down sideways and look. Chemical-wise, just some basic um, ammonia-free glass cleaner which is pretty much just colored alcohol and water. This happens to be Zep brand. I dilute this myself with distilled water. And then you get your choice. You can use paper towel. You can use tiny microfiber cleaning cloths for glasses or big microfiber towels. These all work well. I like them all. They all travel on my tool bag because they all have different purposes in life. We're going to use the microfiber towel for this. Actually, you know what? We're going to use the paper towel for this because I think this will be more than what most people come up with. So, paper towel. And remove our classified document. Spray it. You don't got to get it super wet, just wet enough. And you're going to take your finger and you're going to go through the track and you're going to wipe the track. <laughs> Paying extra attention to the spots where the dots are. If you look, those are your spots. You can really wipe it the rest of the way. I always like to make sure you clean this leading edge and this takeoff edge. Only because the 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 particulate that gets here sometimes is here first and it slides in. Or sometimes it slides off and ends up on your originals and people get really angry when their originals get messed up. So that's what they look like when they're clean. And then they clean the glass. There's two ways to clean the glass. You can do the rag and you can wipe this all down. Which is fine for most things. I find if they're really dirty, I'll put a little spritz in the middle. Fold my paper towel small. Circular motions. Paying close attention to the edges. And then I just go over it with the dry towel. And if you got the little microfibers, you can go over these and they'll grab any little lints and dusts and such, and you'll have clean glass. That's gonna call that's gonna solve most of your imaging problems. The reason it's here on the desk and out of service is the actual scanner element in this is out of focus. On this part, there's really nothing we can do about it. There's no mirrors inside of this. There's nothing we can check. There's nothing we can look at. This unit was just DOA. So we changed this out for a replacement. 
everything's good. But in the replacement of that, there's some things you need to take note of. Especially the shipping of these, because the manufacturer doesn't lock this head in place. So during shipping, it can get jostled around, and this head can actually become disconnected from the drive motors inside. As you see, we'll remove the top, and if you look, this is belt driven. We'll slide it forward here. What happened the last time was, this is only held in a small groove underneath, so this came off of the bar it rides on. And if you notice, it doesn't actually sit anywhere else, it's just, so inside it's just these little wheels riding on the lid, on both sides, the bar, and the drive motor. And the drive motor spring loaded to keep tension on this belt, and then a large gear reduction to move the head around. So in this one, take these off, I'm going to lift the head out. What you'll note is when I pop it off is those two teeth just grab the belt, and that's all that is. And then this just rides in that center track. And as you see, if you look at this head, there's no optics inside of it. There's nothing we can adjust in the field to fix this head. And interestingly enough, this head is made by Canon. Just a fun tidbit there for you guys. You have to be sure of is in shipping is, if this were to ever be dropped in shipping, there's a chance this head could lift and leave the track left, right, up, down, some it can get off track. It's happened, I've seen it. Not so much on this model, but on other models I've seen this jump off the track. And you can take the lid off of most of them and you can put it back. The other thing you need to be aware of on these kind of units is sometimes you will end up with a unit where dirt makes its way onto the back of the glass and you can't clean it from the front. And that, in the same case, as you see, I think I just got some grease on it. I usually use a little bit cleaner. And we just wipe it down. It's very important to keep all the lint off the inside of this glass. And then, you know, you want to blow off the, the lens of the scanner itself. I'm not going to go into the details of taking these out and taking them apart because every printer is going to be different. I'd recommend just Google your service manual or if you're really adventurous, just look around. You'll find the screws that are in it that hold pieces together and what snaps apart and what, what opens. Um, oh, and then the inside. If you ever wonder when your scanner rolls back where you can't see it, there's this white bar. It's actually used to home the scanner. You see the dot and the white. So when the scanner head detects the dot and the white, it goes, oh, I'm at the end of my travel. That's how these scanners line up. There's not like an encoder on the drive assembly itself. Kind of fun. Again, theory and useless trivia, but fun to know, especially if you have a scanner that's just going and just whacking the side. There's a chance that this cannot see that, especially if this light burns out. We have had situations like that where it couldn't track the home position and it couldn't find it again. There's a row of lights usually. The newer ones are all LED in here. The older ones are old cold cathodes. The lights really aren't replaceable. As you see, this whole scanner head is pretty much not replaceable or serviceable. You know, you can get it out, you can do stuff to it, but it's really, you're not going to get, Brother's not going to sell you this part by itself. You're buying this whole assembly. As long as they're clean when you get them and you don't dump dirt into them, they stay clean for a long time. Uh, there's just basic maintenance on the top, keeping it clean, keep the body clean, keep the lid closed. That's going to go miles in keeping the documents clean, and only scan documents that are good. Don't scan unfused documents, don't scan stuff written in crayon, don't scan, you know... Basically, don't scan anything that might leave deposits. Other than that, there's not much else you need to do with these, there's not much else you need to worry about. They're, they pretty much take care of themselves. You do the maintenance on the ADF when it calls for it. When you do ADF maintenance, I always recommend cleaning the glass, cleaning the underside of the platen, cleaning all the path as you see in my videos where I did a maintenance I clean you clean everything that way you don't get too much of a buildup because you'll see you'll get like a film from all the papers you scan I appreciate you guys watching you know like subscribe and comment I'd like to see what you guys think tell me what I've missed what I've made mistakes on because I'm sure there's a lot I'm not I don't claim to be a professional I've done it in a while I'm just I know enough to be dangerous